I'm, does anyone here know about the correlation between customer and demand? Well, there's a strong correlation. Without customers, you don't have demand. And without demand, you don't have profit. So it's very important to have customer demand, customers before you can have demand. So I'm here to talk to you today about planning for customers and demand. I'm Kara Cook, and as you can see, I've done extensive research on customer and demand. A little overview of what I'm going to talk about today is the law of demand, effects on demand, meeting customer expectations, how to satisfy your customers, value of repeat customers, and impulse buys in determining a demand, how to determine for a demand of a product. First we move on to the law of demand. When price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down, and when price goes down, the quantity demanded goes up. As you can see, there is a relationship in, between price and quantity. The relationship is inverse. So next, I'll move on to the effects of buyer demand. One effect is weather. Weather can affect things you sell, when you sell them, and the price you sell them at. So like say you own a restaurant and you sell ice cream. In the winter, you're not going to sell as much ice cream as you do in the summer. So like at a store, you wouldn't sell a bunch of bathing suits in the middle of winter. Um, next one is price. Price sets a lot of determinations of the demand. Many people look at the price before they determine if they need it or not. If it's really high, some may say, maybe I don't need it. Then we'll move on to the geographical location. Location determines a lot of things. You won't expect to see a lot of snowsuits in it's sort of like you're in Hawaii, but you won't see a lot of bathing suits in Alaska to store. Next is the general income of a location. Income determines a lot of demand. The income can determine if you're going to sell a lot of name brand or off-brand products. If, you let, if the store is in an area of low-income poverty area, you're going to sell a lot of off-brand cheap stuff versus if you were in a high-class neighborhood, you'd sell a lot of name brand things. Next thing is, is preference and opinion. Preferences and opinions can make up a lot of demand. If some person suggests it to one of their friends and then one of their friends suggests it to another one of their friends and they all decide they like it, the demand in that product is going to go up by just word of mouth. Next we'll move on to meeting customer expectations. You want to provide your customers with accurate information, give them detailed information about a certain product. Availability, you want to provide quick and efficient follow-up services and you want to reach out to your customers and help them succeed. Give the information that they need to educate them on, and inform them on how to use it, when to use it, and where to use it. It's all very important information to keep them, to help them meet the expectations and know if it's going to be the right product or not. Next, we'll move on to satisfying your customers. You want to listen to your customers. Listen to what they want, what they need, and don't try to sell them something that they're not asking for. You're going to want to anticipate their needs, know what they'll anticipate you want to know what they're going to need in the future, what is going to like you're going to keep selling up. Go over and beyond to help. Make sure if they come in again, you recognize them. Ask them how the product was. Ask them if they liked it or not. And then give great service. Great service is one of the key determinations of people coming back, and you want them to keep coming back because, as you see in the next slide, the value of repeat customers. Best customers have, if you have a best customer that comes in four times a year and average customers that come in two times a year with a gross profit margin of 35%, you'll notice that the gross profit of best customers is $98 and average customers is $49. That's almost a double in your profits. So you'll want to keep them coming back. It's very important to get the repeat customers because that's where you're going to make a lot of your money. And then next we'll move on to impulse buys. Impulse buys are things that people walk in, they see it, and they just grab it off the shelf. It's not on their shopping list, it's not what they came in for, but they just buy it anyway. As you can see, most purchases are unplanned. And only 24% of purchases are specifically planned because that's what's on their list and that's specifically what they want. And then you have the 15% are generally planned, maybe not 100% planned, but they thought about getting it. And then you got the 6% where it's a brand switch. They had it on their list, but they switched on their brand because it was possibly a better deal. And then next we'll move on to how to determine the demand of products and when it will sell and where it will sell. So 
one of them, one big thing is research. Research is very important. It'll tell you all the research, the location of the area, like the location, income, weather perhaps, and go around and check out other people's prices and see what you want to set your prices at. Talk with your customers if you want to talk to them about what they want to see, what they could use, and what they need. And then you want to watch the markets. Say when you order products in and it's really low, you could still set it at a medium price. But as you, if you notice that you, that price in the product is going up, maybe you want to consider getting a different product as a replacement until the price of the other one goes down. So in summary today, I talked about law of demand, effects on demand, meeting customer expectation, satisfying customers, the value of repeat customers, impulse buys, and termination of demand. And there's, it is really important to know the correlation of demand because you want your business to be successful, but without demand, and without customers demanding those products, it will not be successful. Thank you everyone for coming and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.